Are you looking for a fun way to win up to 25 times your money this football and basketball season? Test your skills on Prize Picks, the most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Just select two or more players, pick more or less on their projections for a wide variety of stats, and place your entry. It's as easy as that. If you have the skills, you can turn $10 into $250 with just a few taps. Easy gameplay, quick withdrawals, and injury insurance on your picks are what makes Prize Picks the number one daily fantasy sports app. Ready to test your skills? Join the Prize Picks community of more than 7 million players who have already signed up. Right now, Prize Picks will match your first deposit up to $100. Just visit prizepicks.com slash bluewire and use code bluewire. That's code bluewire at prizepicks.com slash bluewire for a first deposit match of up to $100. Prize Picks, daily fantasy sports made easy. Today's episode is brought to you by cars.com. With over 2 million vehicles and 50,000 more added every day, cars.com will match you with the perfect car for you, your budget, your life, your style. And if you're ready to say goodbye to your current car, cars.com will get you an instant offer to cash it in. Just start by entering your license plate and get matched with a local dealer who will write you the check. So whether you're looking to buy or sell, just go to cars.com. It's magical. Hi, folks. Welcome to a Saturday night edition of Mavs Moneyball's Group Therapy. The Dallas Mavericks just fell to the Golden State Warriors, 119 to 113. It was not their finest game. Shout out to uh, the guys who battled with Luka Doncic out. Starting lineup played pretty hard. They just didn't really have enough. Just did not have it. And, you know, you might think you're joining this feed tonight with a, a, a guy who is pissed. But, look, I'm surprised there are three games over 500 tonight. So, losing one to the Warriors on the road minus Luka Doncic doesn't really surprise me. So let's hang out for a little bit, and then let's go to bed early. Coming up first is my man Krishna. How you doing, Krishna? What's happening? Kirk, how are you? Okay. Okay. I, I had kind of an in, inadvertent uh, – both Josh Bo and I had like a confused Saturday night schedule where I had people coming over. He was going out. So I did the recap of this game with it on mute. So I, I got to miss a lot of weird audio commentary from the ABC lineup, but but what what, what did you think? Um, <laughs> I I don't even know what to say. This felt like I, I I think it was Dalton tweeted it. This felt like the Pelicans game, but in reverse, kind of, <laughs> where like almost the exact same things happened, where the team that should have won had a huge lead. And then that team's best player went out, and then the underdog team led to a led to a game that was that shouldn't have been that close. Like the Warriors scored like seven points or something stupid, like in the final quarter. Like, I, like it, it was it, like an effortless. They were up by twenty something points for stretches of the game, and then they just died. Yeah, it was it, it was shocking. Um, but I, I wasn't surprised. Like, uh, if you told me at the beginning of this game, hey, this is what happened, I would have been like, okay, I'm not moved by it, you know, but I'm not mad. Uh, that's kind of how I felt. And I also kind of feel like all the the hullabaloo from yesterday is, is starting to, to die down. Oh, 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 yeah. I a love lot. it. And I'm sorry I couldn't get to you yesterday. I was We had a bunch of people in the room that don't normally pop by. So I appreciate you coming by, you know, with uh, my weird at, at, at football practice chat. I mean, <laughs> Spencer, uh, apparently the Clippers are making an offer and. <sighs> no, I mean, look, look I'll, I'll, what what I find so funny is I was there and then I saw someone in the chat post like, did Krishna go up? And my mind went, is this person asking because they want to flame me? Or because they're genuinely like want to listen to me, and that that's the best me. part, though, man. Everybody wants that... a little bit of both. Like I was, I was arguing with people yesterday, <laughs> and because I just, you know, I was a little sauced and online, and 
you know, I, I made some fake future quotes and there's this 20 year old Mavs fan who, who doesn't name doesn't matter, but you can tell he's all of like 12. Who's like, look at this old man making, it's like, shut the fuck up. Twitter's for jokes. Like everybody lighten up. All these people, like I had a guy tell me today that he's embarrassed for, I should be embarrassed for my family because I don't like Kyrie. Eat shit. More people need to go touch grass. This is basketball. The Clippers are, are making a play for Kyrie Irving in an attempt to make the entire plane out of cancer. Good job. Let's see how that work out, works out for you. Okay. <laughs> okay, 17 points. They scored 17 points in the final quarter. That's... Man, that's, that's That was that's weird insane. because they were doing um, – there was a couple of like the, – the way their motion cooks where they had a couple of plays at the rim where like Dallas can't guard this even at their best. Oh, oh, no. It, the way I think about it is how every team in the West treats the, the Grizzlies because every team in the West has a better half-court offense than the Grizzlies. That's what the Warriors do to the Mavericks. Yes. Like uh, – if you told someone like if I, my like no one in my family really watches sports, and if I told my family the point of these teams is to shoot threes and play defense, but one team is significantly better, they would be so <laughs> confused because they would go, "Wait, but they do the same thing," and I say, "But not really," um, and and that's the key, right? Like uh, Steph is a great player, but what makes Steph so different from just being like a a great shooter? is he does so much of it off ball. Now, I yeah. think like a lot of the discussion has been this season, he hasn't done as much off ball stuff because they are also kind of in their own mess in a way. But that's that's always been killer for the Mavericks. That's what killed them last season with the rebounds is just that they're got like, I like Reggie and Dorian, but like those guys are not great at chasing. It's and But chasing, like who is good at chasing? But that, was- yeah, that's... The- there That's was the like issue. a, it, it was the, like a, I don't know if it was a corner three or just above the break, Steph Curry three from Draymond on a behind the back pass that then he screened, and it's just like nobody plays like this. No, 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 no one, no. One. I mean, like, look at this: thirty three assists. Like, that's stupid. That's a stupid number of assists. Brett Brett Stover asks how I think how I think Green did today. We're we're gonna let's circle back to Josh Green because I my my inclination is to talk for like three and a half minutes about the shit kickingly awesome pass he made to Tim Hardaway. Oh my god! To, yes, the, the wraparound, wraparound okay. pass of badassness oh, was... where it's just like what who does that? That was such a cool is... play and it blots out oh. the fact that he was a negative twenty eight. <laughs> well, well, the thing was, like, you know, uh, I was listening to your Pelicans uh, recap because I, I'm so backed up on podcasts. Sure, you like and, pain. Yeah, I do. And you were talking about how, what was it, oh, like how teams just are not game planning for Josh. They don't know what he's going to do. He's like, a, they, he's like, a, he's a glitch. Exactly. And I think part of it is they aren't game planning for him also because, like you said, they just don't know what to do with the guy. Like, it... it Josh has, I think, gotten to this point where he knows what he's doing, where it felt like in years past, he's doing, he's going to do something, but even he does not know what's going to yeah. happen. And that felt like a moment where it was like, last year, he might have tried to go to the rim. Whereas now he realizes, I can just pass this to someone, and no one is going to expect it. And that's what I'm appreciative of. Like, I, yeah. I, like, I remember in the summer, I was because I was on 77 Spaces earlier tonight, And I remember in the summer, we had this conversation where people were asking why he is not on the summer league team. And it's so funny to think about, but it shows how much, like how much he's grown in the estimation of just this fan base as a whole. And that's a credit to him. Like even in a bad night like this, where you look at the stats, you look at the box score, you think like, oh, was he really that good? But it shows that he's just grown into a much better player. Now, I think the reality is he's not going to be a superstar. Like, that's just not real. But he's become a, a significant contributor far greater than what I would have thought. Sure. Connecting piece. He matters. Exactly. And, and those are – Yeah. And those are important, especially those are really important to just have in-house. Like – you, you can trade for them. Like Denver needed those kind of guys, right? Like that's why Denver went and traded for KCP. 
right? That's why guys like OG are really important. Um, they're difficult to find. Like they're really easy to want, but they're very difficult to find. Um, I mean, otherwise, I don't really know much. Like I'm still confused why AJ Lawson is not playing more minutes. That dude um, was fun in summer league. He is fun in limited minutes. I, I feel like I'm missing something. Yeah, I I don't understand it. Like he's certainly better this is than a, Theo this has Pennington, been a joke. Who gave seven minutes yes. of nothing, which is yes. You know. it, it, it's I don't understand it. Like Jason Kidd is getting to the point where there, there's been a joke about is he just Tom Thibodeau two point oh? Like he might legitimately just be Tom Thibodeau two point oh. Like I don't understand at what point you look at the minutes total for some of these guys like Dorian and Reggie and you go, let's just play AJ Lawson like 10 yeah. to 15 minutes. Like, uh, especially in a game like this, where it, it, you could, you're probably going in thinking we're not going to win. So I'm just going to give guys a better opportunity and a better chance. And it's confused me so much. Why? Because you cut Tyler Dorsey, which I was not like a, I was not against it. And then you signed him, but then, you never used him during that period. And that's, what's so confusing to me. Like I, I'm not going to sit here and think or say that AJ Lawson is somehow going to become better than Reggie or Dorian. No, but he can still be passable. Like, I mean, they're trying to make, they're trying to stay as high in the seedings as possible. They're trying to win every game, despite like the sicko part of my brain that it's like, what if they go on a five game losing streak? Maybe they'll tank and get women. Like that's not a thing, but, but that's the, the thing is like, I, I I've always felt like this team is just not going to be able to tank at all at this point no. because the, the the worst teams are not this team will what at least nobody's minimum. tanking. There's like four teams that are tanking. It's fucking ridiculous. That and also this team is not like no none of those teams are going to get to thirty wins. And this Mavericks team, for as bad as it is, is somehow going to at least get to thirty wins. So like to me, that's completely off the table. But it's been something I've been crying out for is just this team does need to get younger at some point like AJ Lawson is younger than most of the guys on this roster he does something most of the guys on this roster don't do which is cut to the basket and it's why I have felt like you need to at least put these put these guys out there with with competitive lineups that make sense like I understand the roster is not it doesn't mean that you just put whatever you want out there and it feels like at times you're still just putting whatever you want out there um, I don't know. Like, I, I don't really have much to say from this game because it, there's not much to take away from this game. Jaden Hardy did what Jaden Hardy has done. He had good moments. Right. He had not great moments. And he's a rookie, and that makes sense. That's fine. Um, yeah, I guess, okay, I'll get to the trade thing because I know people might want my opinion. Sure, let's hear your opinion. <sighs> let's go with it. because and, and let's be clear that where we are, it's Saturday night, 1130. Kyrie, yes, the Kyrie yes. wins have swung far away from Dallas. Nobody in Dallas really has talked about this yet, but that I'll just I'll just tell you that that's that's the case. Yeah, and even I, what did I say yesterday in the chat? I said this one. I, mean, I don't know. Most I, of I, the I feel like I feel like... I'm a terrible audience for this. <laughs> I feel bad for you because even I feel that way at times, right? Like my nah, thing look, is, man, I hate Kyrie Irving so much as a player, as a concept, <laughs> as a being, because the fucker absorbs so much oxygen from the room. And I deal with so many people that I'm convinced are Thanos snapped back into existence. And they, they were, they left immediately. It was, it was August of 2016 and they just came back and they don't understand why <laughs> Kyrie Irving is one of the best players alive. <sighs> like, like t- to me, it, it, it comes down to this. It, very much depends on what you view your value as. I was in a space yesterday where people were saying stuff that I have no idea why they were saying. Dude, that man, that the, um, the, the chat. Those of you who don't read our chat, you can't read that after the fact. The chat was spicy. <laughs> I loved it. Oh yeah, yesterday's chat. Yesterday's chat was. Where'd you go? You left. You muted yourself. Sorry, There's sorry. I looked at amateur hour. No, I left. I look at the chat and then I go back and then it automatically mutes me. Apologies. Sure. I'm just messing. Uh, my limit is honestly like Spencer Christian Wood in a second. Like I would not go beyond that. Um, I I don't think it's sure. worth the first round pick. 
Um, and it's just because I think it'd be interesting to take a chance on him. But my whole situation is Kyrie Irving simultaneously raises your ceiling and lowers your floor. And I'll explain how he raises your ceiling because yes, when you have everything on the court, theoretically you are a better team. You have a better ball handler and a better scorer than Spencer Dinwiddie. But when, your, your floor should be your worst case scenario. And your worst case scenario is you don't have Kyrie and Luca, which is a high possibility that, that has to be discussed. And when you don't have both of them, and then you don't have Spencer or Christian Wood, you're an even worse team. And so that's why I say your floor is much lower, but your ceiling is also higher. And so I, I understand why there is some trepancy, but I completely understand why people are so excited. Now, ultimately, do I think this happens? No. I think ultimately it's probably going to be a three-team trade because the Nets are not going to ever tank because they gave all their picks to Houston. Right. And they're going to need win-now players, and likely they can get someone from – they might get uh, they might get Utah to give them players. They might get Toronto to give them players. And the Lakers will give their picks up, I think, possibly. Or even the Clippers will give their picks up. And I don't think the Mavericks will. So ultimately, I think that's where it ends up. Um, otherwise, I don't really know. This is this is the problem. Like, the trade Mavericks... deadline sucks. I hate trade deadline. Like, uh, my, my man Dalton, if if he's listening to this, will yell at me later. He's like, this is my time. And it's like, you, you read this, like, there's a quote from Tim Hardaway within the last 20 minutes about – how he's learned to handle the uncertainty and speculation at trade deadline time. As far as I know, I'm a Dallas Maverick and I'm going to ride with my guys and do whatever I can to compete and do our best to win ball games while I'm here. I hate it. I, I, I often talk about players inadvertently like they're assets and that they're not people. This is advertiser content brought to you by Frito-Lay. Hello, I'm Chip Murphy here to get you ready for the big tournament. Tonight we'll break down, we break down who will be cutting, cut! What are you two doing? Sorry, Chip. Prez here got his feathers ruffled when I told him Ruffles has zero chance of winning the title. And I was letting Dip know that she is not taking into account Ruffles' iconic ridges. Guys, it's March. We have to start talking about the tournament. We are. It is the 2023 Frito-Lay snack It. We're talking about big-time matchups between Cheetos, Smart Food, Lay's, Sun Chips, and more. Just head to the Frito-Lay snack bracket and vote for your favorite chip, pretzel, or dip for a chance to win up to $1,000 or a year's worth of snacks. This sounds great. Keep up the good work. Just go to frito No purchase necessary. Sweepstakes ends 4-3-2023. Void wherever hip Here's worth of snacks awarded in the form of 52 coupons, each good for one bag of chips. See official rules at frito I hate this. Yeah, I, I mean, just, I hate it. I, I, I feel bad because I haven't brought this up, but earlier in the month, I think earlier in January, there was a piece on Tyrell Terry uh, from SI. And it was so interesting to read, right? Yeah. Like, you think about the guy joined, like he made the decision to go to the draft when he was 19 and you read about how he made the decision and you could see like this guy just, he wasn't convinced. Like he didn't know if he should do it. And it, a lot of that played out throughout his career and you see how it affected him. Like he talked about how like he would go to practices and like, if you haven't heard of him, he was one of the picks that the Mavs made in, uh, in 2020. I think he was either the late first or early Who, second. Tyrell pick. Terry? Yeah. Yeah. Come on now. Yeah. He was. He was. Oh, at Stanford. I thought, he was a fun, sorry, I didn't know. I didn't know that freshman. Was he was. He was the guy that that my man <laughs> Kevin O'Connor touted as like a top fifteen pick, oh, and he's Kevin. since retired for what he says are sort of mental health reasons. And I am not going to make any further comments because I don't want to get in any trouble. No, and I understand that. But, like, reading the story, like, you you can see, like, it was probably never going to work out. Like, he talked about how he would go to a practice, and he would be all sweaty and nervous, obviously, because you're obviously running. But then he would just start throwing up, like, before and after practices. And, like, you're not – like, the mentality players have to have to play – just play in the NBA is an insane mentality. Like, just to even be a role player, you kind of have to be insane. And so I get it. Like, this this sucks, and – it's always going to be tough, but ultimately 
I, I think how we talk about players is important yeah. because I try. I, I waffle. I fuck up on it all the time. And with I think the it's one exception like, of Kyrie Irving, which I'm okay with hating. <laughs> I, I I don't go that. I I don't know. I think it's obviously it's different. I mean, for the, everyone, the right? concepts. I don't know him. It's like I don't want to. You know, I don't yeah, want to deal with course. this chicanery anymore. Too much oxygen. And like I said, like ultimately, like the team is going to do what they want. Like uh, it's great that we can all talk into these voids and right. we feel heard, and we are heard. Like at least all of us are listening to each other, and and that's the best part. But. Who knows what this team is going to do? Who knows what's going to happen? I mean, yeah, we don't get just, any say. I mean, like two weeks ago, we were in eleven, and now we're somehow in fifth still. Like, th- it That's doesn't right. make any sense. This, this, this doesn't make any sense. So, uh, ultimately, I personally don't think anything is of significance is going to happen. Eat at Arby's, and that's it. Eat at Arby's, I guess. <laughs> All right, I'm going to leave it on that. I hope everyone has a great night uh, and stay safe. Talk soon, Krishna. All right, coming up next is my man Brent Brooks calling in from an undisclosed location, mainly because he's supposed to be on vacation. Brent, what are you doing? Hey, I'm, I'm chiming in because I didn't get to be on the last show. Oh, I'm sorry about that. God, I felt bad ending the show. But the problem was I had eight, eight year or six-year-olds running at me. Like, <laughs> and so I had to end the show immediately because they were, like football practice was over. So what's going on? Well, I just... I don't have much of a desire to talk about tonight's game. I hope you don't That's mind. Fine. I just want to hit on, a, hit on a couple of things that have been on my mind since this whole Kyrie thing has come to the surface. And I guess the idea of a player, as you're referring to not liking the idea of Kyrie, I think that it, what's been permeating my mind lately is this: the idea of a star player being disconnected from how good they actually are and how they view themselves. He wants, what, four years, $200 million? No sane GM in the league should give him that, and mainly because of the off-court stuff and the unreliability. But when you also look at the likelihood that he will decline rather sharply given how he plays and his body type, I mean, LeBron is... 30, what, 38, year 20, doing incredible things from a a workload standpoint, the number of minutes and the production. But there is a high point and a tapering off of players that doesn't necessarily match up with their contract. And a lot of these guys that are in the 29, 30, 31 age range are looking, especially if they're playing really well and or have name cachet, are looking for that last deal because they know that there's a really good chance that in their 34, 35 year seasons, they're not going to be really uh, up to the standards they set in their prime. And given all the other baggage that he's got, the idea of an incentive late in two year deal, which may or may not be what I think that's what the nets are probably offering. Even if it is a four year deal, the limitations that they're saying, Hey, games played and, and whether we win a championship and other drivers of that contract, he doesn't want anything along those lines. He wants some sucker team to trade for him so he never hits the free agent market and give him that high-level contract that I don't think he really should be given if you're thinking logically about what he's likely to become over the next four years. Not even talking about the drama. Not even talking oh, about yeah, the oxygen he's, coming he's out. A of the- 30, he's a thirty-one-year-old, six-foot-three guard. Like that. That is the the most logical thing about him. And Josh Bo, my my co-editor, our 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 colleague Brent, keeps talking about. It. He's like, if the Mavericks were to trade for him, then they're signing him. They gave KP guaranteed money in a market where he didn't deserve it earn it or really like they did it as a gesture of good faith there was nobody giving kp all that money the mavericks did it because they're suckers and that's part of why the mavericks are on this list now we know now because it's saturday night the mavericks are 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 interested i don't really um, i heard i've heard some stuff I, i don't this to me is as close to not a thing is anything that that has come up late lately. Like the Mavericks, 
they could well, make some things where it's just like like Chris Henderson, who covers the Mavericks, talked about how you know certain teams are going to give up picks and blah blah blah. I don't think any team that had like if if you give up picks for him, whether you feel that way about him or not, that's the final move. My my friend Peter in the chat, um, significantly better basketball player than I am, really really annoying that that's the case. Um, notes that every every player comes with baggage. He's absolutely right about that. But the notion of this being the Mavericks' final move on Luca's first on Luca's mega deal, they're tri- like, I I would joker so hard at, <laughs> because it's just like Kyrie. Kyrie's like the risk of sure. risks, you know. I, I it would be so because what's crazy is that at his peak, just in terms of like a two man lineup, he and Luca are so brutal. But if you give up anybody in the lineup right now of significance, meaning like Dorian Finney Smith primarily. They're on the first round anyways. I don't know. I don't know. This is- well, there's two kinds of trades for Kyrie. There's the kind of trade where you give up one or more first round picks. Really dumb. We would we would set it on fire if that happened. Uh Dorian, Josh Green, that kind of thing. I think this is what McMahon was talking about on the uh, emergency pod for Hoop Collective. The, the most that your um, previous uh, Krishna was saying uh, Dinwiddie and Wood and a second, I would say Wood Hardaway and a second is as far as I would go because if you give up Spencer in a trade for Kyrie, you're still in the same situation. You're just maybe improving in some respects. Um, Kyrie over Spencer, but who's your third guard at that point? Right, you're raising the thing- floor because Kyrie is much better than Spencer, but you still don't have anybody who can dribble. Yeah, you're you're still at two, and who's your third point guard at that point? Or your third facilitator? We saw last year how important that was, and I think that part of what aggravates you and I about all this, these fake trades and these the videos and the blog posts and the podcast that get chock full of this is that it's really good for page views and video views because it makes content that is fun from a fantasy sports, fantasy basketball kind of mentality. That's And the reason it drives us crazy is that it's not tethered to reality because GMs aren't dealing with uh, the ability to pull a mulligan. If you make a bad trade, I mean, the definition of what, Minnesota did to their franchise. We're thinking about it now. We're looking at the Gobert trade as a disaster now. How it's going to look in four or five years? They set their their franchise on fire for a decade <laughs> in order to get a player who's on the decline. See, uh, that's the idea of Gobert being better than the actual player because only in retrospect are you able to see the career year, the pinnacle year, the very best year, most of the time, it's either a sharp or slow decline off of that. The players that are able to age gracefully, you know, into their 30s, they're declining, but they're usually declining on a slower pace. Most people thought Dirk was on the decline and he surprised everybody in 11. And we saw a very slow and graceful decline and much more longevity with someone like Burke and someone like LeBron than most players. Gobert's going to be awful in five years. He's already kind of bad now, but can you imagine the amount of money they're paying? And, like, we were on uh, – I didn't get to be on the last show, but one of your callers said, I don't care if we throw in a first for Kyrie because the Mavs can't draft anyway. That was a great like, – I, I hated how much that was oh. on point. Well – yeah, I didn't like it because if let's say you include it, whether it's Kyrie or for somebody else, right. you include the 2027 pick right now. You are then covering up the 26th and 28th pick from, from being traded as well. It is a three-year block of no first-round picks until the 27th pick is conveyed. Then you can trade the 28th, right? But up until it's conveyed, you've got that three-year block. So you've got to think long and hard about using even one first-round pick and the idea that the Mavs have been bad 
in the trade, I mean, in the drafts in, in previous years should not be licensed to say, oh, sure, let's in a very cavalier way just start throwing those firsts around. It's, this is a, a chance for the Mavericks to kind of get into a, a mode of delayed gratification if they can't come up with a trade that only takes maybe Woods deal or money they want to get off of. It goes back to the, being the take your medicine year. And, and I, I don't think that a lot of fans are going to want that because everybody's hungry for this roster to improve and they're interdicted by circumstances. <sighs> Aren't we all Brent? Aren't we all? This is a good point. Yeah. I just, I just, <laughs> I'm worried that, um, that Kyrie is is probably going to go to the Lakers and make them a juggernaut, but ah, I wouldn't. Come on, that's my favorite part. So, so I read this today, and this is a good point. Part of why Kyrie did this is to force the Lakers' hand because after they traded for Rui Hachimura, yeah. they can't sign Kyrie into space because they're going to re-sign Kyrie or they're going to re-sign uh, Rui Hachimura. So this was a result of of basically trying to force the Lakers' hand and make Kyrie's intentions known. The thing that I'm starting to wonder is what if no one wants his bullshit, which would really be impressive. Like well, this is a league that does not care about your past. Nor, I mean, no sports league does. Like that, that's the nature of sports. It's not morals. It's sports. But what if everyone is so yeah. tired of and the constant chicanery? This guy missed. He played 143 games for the Nets to date for $100 million. Fuck out of here. He didn't earn, like, well, I mean, I guess he earned it. But did he provide that value, that value back? They won one playoff series. Back in the 90s, when it was J- the Jimmy Johnson era of the Cowboys, if, if a low-tier player breathed wrong, Johnson would cut them. <laughs> but his star players, he would put up with so much stuff, you know, really kind of murky gray area stuff. I won't name names, but we all know to go back and read that chapter of history, if you're curious, yeah. how good a player is often drives how much organizations will put up with. So oh, if, teams, if teams are not going to sign on for the Kyrie experience, given how talented, talented and productive he has been when actually on the court, particularly in the last few weeks, that is saying something because he's the kind of player you would think in a vacuum you would hold your nose and go, okay, yeah, sure. Yep. No, and and if if the Mavericks were to clear some bad salary and trade for him for four months, I'd still be fine with that. He can go do whatever the hell he wants to do. I just I, I'm I'm still like firmly against elements of it for my own thoughts of how teams ought to be built. But you know, nobody cares. What well, I think. the fantasy Kirk, the fantasy basketball mentality says. Kyrie is a big name, and we need a big name and a big star, and that's what we've been missing. But that does not include the concept of team chemistry, team fit, and potential Ooh, drama. Teammates Ooh. love him up until they're tired of him. That's the weird – like, well, Jalen Brown still still swears by him, which is a different story entirely. But, you know, I've worked with people like that who are rock stars right up until you want to eject them into space. Like, that happens. Well, uh, apparently Nico and, and Kid have a relationship there, but I, I guess it just doesn't feel like a Maverick kind of move uh, in terms of a long-term fit. I remember when Rondo was traded for, I'm not saying that Kyrie is Rondo, but that felt like a, a conflagration waiting to happen, and it eventually did. Mm. Maybe the same thing doesn't happen here, but when most of the time, like when they were trading for uh, Spencer last year, the word was they were searching behind the scenes in the locker room for guys that knew Spencer to kind of go, hey, what's the scoop with this guy? Because the Wizards were putting out what they were putting out about him. And there were, I don't know if it was Pinson or somebody oh, I else still see. vouching. 
I get heat for this, but I don't I don't care. When Spencer gives a three and a half minute answer to like, so what was your thought process behind that move? And he'll, you know, end on like it'll be like a three and a half minute answer. Like that's the sort of stuff that Spencer's teammates hated. But the Mavericks, I love Spencer because he he does exactly the wild stuff. Like like he 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 just doesn't care. And every team needs the guy that doesn't care. And I I, I yeah. He's got a gunner mentality, and I do like his rambling. I know you don't. I, I, I think he's fit here in a way that maybe – or better than he's fit in other places. I've got a feeling like Kyrie wouldn't fit here. And as you said, let's, let's, if it's a flyer and we can get off bad salary, sure. But, man, if it is mortgaging the future and this is your big swing at a co-star, it's a mistake. And I don't think they're crazy enough to do this, but – you were saying a couple things the other day that, hey, this feels like it might happen, and now you're saying maybe it won't. I, I hope that that's the case now that it's not going to. Well, the the so I, I mentioned how I spent some time on the Twitters, and, and my favorite is people that think Twitter matters. Twitter is a place for jokes, sass, having a good time, etc. The objectively funniest outcome of all this is Kyrie Irving becoming a Maverick when I don't have access to my phone. And like me coming back like four hours after he becomes a Maverick only to just like, no, God, no, why? (laughs) Like, yeah, perfect. It's because I mean, 2016 when the Mavericks signed Barnes, I was so against Barnes because I did not think he was a max contract guy. History has largely proven me right. He's not a heart. He's not a max contract guy. But Barnes is a great dude and a great player. No. And so it's just like, you know, my opinions on anything don't ultimately matter. I just, I have a great time with all this. But you got anything else before I move on? You too, buddy. Man, two speakers, 36 minutes. It's a long time. Brandon, what's up? Mr. Pearson, are you there? How are you? Yes, sir. I'm pretty slow. Thank you, Kirk. How you doing? Okay, I am. I am all right. I have a house guest here, and he is probably like, "What are you doing?" But he is also a basketball guy, so he. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, to me, I mean, I, I was going to talk about the game, but y'all started talking about trades, and um, just do I look at it as Dallas is never in contention for a trade or or any types of free agents. And um, you, I don't know, you might agree with me, you may not, but I was thinking that just looking at just the history of the Mavs, they haven't brought in, and this is just kind of off with trades more free agents, they haven't brought in a good free agent. They rarely bring in good free agents. And so I would say the best free agent signing they ever had was probably Jason Terry because the few people that they did bring in were through trades. Um, Tyson was through a trade. Um, Michael Feeling was through a trade. Sean Marion was through a trade. Even going back to like Donaldson and Adrian Danley, those are through trades. And Dallas rarely brings in any type of talent. Um, their Terry name was, Terry was a trade too. I thought Terry was a 2005 free agent from Atlanta. I could be wrong. I mean, but if I am, I apologize. But I was thinking he was a 2005 free agent from the Hawks and he went as a free agent. Now your point is largely understood, understood though. Uh, okay. And thank you for correcting me. But, but yeah, if you think about it, even during the off season, when everybody's gearing up uh, for drafts, uh, Dallas's name is not in contingent for good drafts. Um, when it comes to trades, it's always like, Dallas is a potential spot, but it seems like it's more media spin than it's actual, you know, a realistic idea of Dallas getting anybody. And so, I mean, I won't say it's laughable to think that somebody's going to go to Dallas, but I mean, it's kind of hard to deny that people just don't go to Dallas. And I don't, I, I always wonder if it's just like, uh, um, I don't know. I wonder if it's more like a, a a culture thing that, you know, people just rather go to you know somewhere else rather than than a, you know than the Mavericks. 
to answer your question about free agency, players want to go to four teams. <laughs> Lakers, the Heat, the Lakers and the Heat. Like like any place that's on the coast. Like this is just that's the thing that's been the case forever. Forever, forever. The reason the Mavericks have not been able to seal the deal on free agency is not an easy answer. I have some theories. My theories, I think, are backed by some strong evidence. But cap space and players and coaches, like, it's just such a volatile situation. So I've sort of come off being irritated at the front office for not being able to close any deals and stick with my my sort of long-term contention that if you limit yourself only to free agency, you're going to have a hard time with it. Draft, trade, work the waiver wire like it's fantasy football. I don't know. It's tough. It seems to me that Dallas, you know, the, the execs, they always swing for the fence. Um, the big name star or, you know, the, the hot guy that's out there, they never really try to get – the pieces that would make them, um, you know, like a service of a bench or, you know, some type of uh, missing spot like they need right now, a defender, or somebody that's going to, you know, rebound or something like that. You get a name like Kyrie instead of somebody that's going to, you know, grit it out. And I think that's one of the reasons why. And um, I think a lot of that goes back to the Cuban era um, because sure. he always put the name out there. It's, it's always the biggest name, it's in his mind, the biggest name that, that a person could get. And it's like, you know, they want to give up everything for this one person. And they, don't, you know, don't want to make any moves for um, what's actually needed. So I think a lot of it goes back to Cuban. But it's just interesting that um, Dallas name gets brought up in, in everything. But it's nothing, nothing ever comes out of it. But just, you know, a bunch of media. I, it's why I don't like this time of year. There's just so much that it brings out a lot of, you know, some people really enjoy the speculation, but for me, it brings out the worst in me. Absolutely. And then it brings out just like the thirst of fan bases. And it's like, well, what if we just drafted guys and played well and made small uh, trade deadlines? Just gross. And you made a point, man. I mean, Kind of like how these NBA players are people. And, you know, I pretty much follow Dallas News religiously. You know, Mavs Moneyball, uh, Bleacher Report, everything. And if you kind of follow the team and look at kind of who they are as people, it's, it's pretty, you know, fascinating of what, you know, Dallas does in the community because, like, Pal, a lot of people may just look at him on the court, but, like, if you follow the, the way the media cover him, he does a lot in the Dallas community. And that's the teams as well. They do a lot for the schools, like the backpack giveaways and, and everything that they do. And so, you know, um, people take the human element out of out of sports through, you know. I do through a like, lot. I don't mean to, but it happens. Yeah. It, it happens, and I do it as well, too. You know, I kind of get, you know, laser focused on what's going on, you know, within those four quarters instead of, really who these people are and you know it, it just makes me like appreciate pal and, and the other guys for you know kind of what they do i know a lot of people probably think that since they have money they're obligated to share their wealth but you know just from a human standpoint dallas does a lot for you know for that community you know in different areas and i, I mean i feel you all the way on that point but um i think that i think the players they kind of get kind of sick of of hearing you know i might be traded so i think I, if i was tim hardaway jr i would probably give a you know a vanilla answer as well as you know as i just go out there and do my job and don't think about it because i mean he's probably sick of hearing how he shoots terribly and you know people came can't, can't wait to get rid of him well thank you so much for hanging out with us and staying up late got anything else thank, no sir thank you sir all right talk soon Let's go with Harris. How you doing, Harris? Hey, Kirk. How are you? I'm 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 a little tired. It just hit me in the last ten minutes, but that's okay. What? what... Mm-hmm, it's about midnight. I'm doing good. Tired as well. Pretty late night. Um. Anyways, I just saw Mark Stein's new uh subtext subsect piece. I saw that the Clippers were monitoring Wood. I was wondering if you thought we could get Canard for him, and if that would be a good move. Two years on his contract, shoots like 45% from three for his career. That's a fun one. 
I have no idea where the organization is on Kennard. Uh, I'm mm-hmm. sorry, on Wood. But if you're able to move Wood for value, even if it's like like kind of floundering value, maybe you have to take that. Now, taking on money is something I know the Mavericks are about, but it, that's a, that's a good question. I mean, it's, I think it still fits within their timeline because, like, they wanted to give Wood, like, a two-year, three-year deal. He's only there for two more years mm-hmm. after this one. Yeah. So, I think it fits in further. And if you're trying to get out of Tim Hardaway. There's a number you, of Clippers, though, year. that I like. Like, like Peter in the chat says, mm-hmm. I'd rather Wall and Powell. And I I just – I, 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 I don't, don't hate Wall. the concepts. I don't hate any of it. Mm-hmm. I think they would try to get Covington – try to get us to take Covington. But I think that's – How many, how many years does Covington have? have? Just next year. So an and he'd just be year. another like six seven guy to throw out. He's a little he's he's what I envision. Mm-hmm. I've made this comment on a couple of shows now, but I, I think that Bob Covington is what is it, like Dorian Finney Smith is the next Bob Covington, the guy who mm-hmm. everybody thinks is better for longer. Yeah, but we we, we got those guys at home. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good Trade point. <laughs> yeah, so I mean that'd be interesting. I don't know, like if if the Kyrie stuff doesn't end up happening, whether it's good or not, I mean, there's some like marginal moves you can make. Like, I mean, they talked about Cam Reddish. who's like not that interesting, but if you well, want to Reddish him, like, stinks. Yeah. But if you could get like package him with Hartenstein for Bullock, if you're trading away wood or something like that, yeah. I think like the Karis Levert for Tim Hardaway swap, if that still happens, that'd be interesting too. And there's a lot of marginal stuff you could probably do that fixes your sheet and maybe gives you some better standing this year too. It's good thinking. I like it. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, I'm going to go. All right. Good night. Thanks so much. Michael, what's up? Thanks for waiting. No problem, Kirk. Uh, I actually was at the game tonight. You were at the game? Uh, yeah. Wow. And, uh, well, I, I mean... Lesson learned, uh, not buying tickets like months in advance, only for Wood and Luca to get hurt like in the weeks and days before the game. Well, that's true. That's, yeah. I think in the future I'm going to just like buy the tickets, uh, maybe like the day of and see. Cause I was checking, it's like the prices are the same. Like, okay. Um, but yeah, I guess it was just, uh, it was very frustrating to see like, uh, just like during warm ups, I, I just see like JaVale, like, He's like launching corner threes, like missing like nine out of ten, and then he's like getting on the exercise bike. And then at the same time, I see like Looney on the other end. He's like he's actually like practicing like putbacks and stuff, like his like touch around the rim. And I was like, I'm like, okay, <laughs> like it's just so emblematic of the season that um, you know the Western Conference Finals where you know Looney kind of tore us up and. Yep. Like in the clutch, Yaluni gets a key offensive rebound. And... rebound. The Mavs had two dudes boxing him, and he still got it. It was it was maddening. And then and then like Javit, like kids saying, "Oh yeah, we'd rather put Theo Pinson at the five instead of Javale." And like that's like the exact moment when that keyed like a sixteen to two run, which was pretty much the difference in the game. Yep. Like that like, the game was lost like in the first quarter with yep. that sixteen to two run. And so it was just, uh, yeah, it was, that was quite well, it frustrating. It might have also been the 11 to 2 run to start the game. Yeah, that, that, that was, that was rough. Those, it's <laughs> moments like that that make me wish for Rick Carlisle because the moment the Clippers score, or I'm sorry, the moment the, the Warriors go up like 5 0 or whatever the hell the score was, Carlisle calls a timeout. Whereas Kid is like, what if we let them score more points? You know, yeah, like, and 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 it's like the funny thing is that he'll always justify it by saying like I wanted to give the guys a chance to like work their way out of it, and I'm like, well, what is your purpose? What are you doing, just sitting on the standing on the sideline? Um, yeah, like I couldn't believe the amount of like lineups that he ran out there with like like the, where the tallest player was like Reggie Block, and then he made like Jamichael Green look like a like one of the best role players. Like, he probably had, like, his best game of the season. And, like, Draymond, like, looked like back, like, like looked like he was back to prime Draymond. It was, yeah. And the icing on the cake probably was during halftime 
when, uh, you know, I just looked at the scores and I see uh, Jalen Brunson dropping like 41, like seven and five, like on like 14 of 19 shooting against the Clippers who we, you know, we're just like, nah, you know, he, he can't, he can't finish against length. And yeah, that was, so that was, it was a I great. I remember those days when he couldn't finish against length. <sighs> yeah. I mean, I, yeah, I mean, I think I've gone on before and like ranted about Brunson. So I don't really want to do it okay. again, but Brunson's, it's just, Brunson's the ex-girlfriend. We're just going to be mad about it forever. It's like, uh, I was actually rooting for him to make the all-star game just so like, it just highlights you know, like Cubans incompetence or like Cubans, I don't know, like his stinginess, but eh, maybe he'll make it in as a reserve. It's, it's, it's kind of difficult because it's like, it's like, I don't have any, well, actually I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I, I still don't know how to feel about him in terms of like, um, whether I should be annoyed with like all the kind of, I don't know, all like the, the tampering stuff with his dad and stuff, but also just like how we clearly, didn't really value him and did not stop at any moment to show him how much we did not value him. And yeah, I mean, it's pretty much playing out. Like I think a lot of uh, like a lot of Mavs sort of kind of assumed it would. Well, yeah. Don't want to continue ranting. Why? It's just... fun. Thank you for hanging out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, it was uh, kind of fun. Okay. I will say it was it was it was kind of interesting to see uh, AJ Lawson get like some minutes. He he has some juice, I think. Uh, like I think at the very least, like I mean, he had some pretty crazy dunks in the layup line, like before the game. So he's uh, he's like I think he has like more hops than even like Josh King. He might be like the most athletic player on the team. Um, yeah, I think he he's got something. Like I think like if his like his his shot looks good, I think like he he had well he hit one. I just said one went out, one out of three or something, but. He was like playing like pretty decent defense from what I saw. He had like a putback, I think, as well. Um, yeah, I mean, just maybe. I guess that's what being a fan is all about, right? Just like trying to look at look at the two ways and like try and like project forward and look at the like the small like the small victories. But um, yeah, that I thought that was interesting. A part of me was kind of thinking that they were kind of they. I was wondering whether Kid was kind of giving the bench a little bit more run to kind of showcase the starters a little bit while also sure. keeping them like not overextending them in minutes. Cause Spencer is kind of crazy. He's like leading the league or not leading the league. He's like eighth in the like, minutes played, which is kind of insane. Like thinking about just like how much we've kind of run him into the ground. Um, and yeah, I mean, I think, uh, well, I've kind of lost my thought. No, but, no. Yeah. Do you feel was, better? You feel better getting that out. Uh, yeah, I definitely do. Um, yeah, but any, anyway, I mean, I can't say, I mean, I guess I wasn't really expecting them to win. There's some nice things, but ultimately it's 0 and 7 with Luca still waiting on that for, without Luca, I guess, still waiting to see for the first, the first elusive game that we win without him. Maybe it'll be against Utah. That's right. Let's That's move. right. Well, thank you, Michael. We'll talk soon. Okay. We got Karam. What's happening? Welcome to the show. Hi. It's an outstanding me. That's an outstanding photo you have there. What's going on? Thank you. Um, not much. Um, I'm from California, so uh, it must suck that you guys are what midnight. That's right midnight. It's fine. Can't hear you the best. Can you come any closer to the mic? There yeah, we go. Can you hear me now. Um. Can I talk about quickly about the potential Kyrie Irving to the Mavs? You can talk about whatever the hell you want. That's why I have this show. Um, if we're going to do the trade for Kyrie, I would prefer low risk, high reward. So what I mean by that, from what I've read is what Dinwiddie and who was it? Dorian Finney-Smith for Kyrie was what the Nets were covering for. Yep. Um, if that's something the Nets would want, do you think they'd want maybe Kyrie and Bullock with a second? I mean, not Kyrie, Dinwiddie, Bullock, and a second instead of Dorian? Because I feel like if we're going to have Kyrie for what? 
for what three four months and maybe he does get us get us to the finals i don't know if we'd want to resign him with all this on court and off court well man you you trade for him and if you were to get to the finals no and my even me super pessimist i would pro- you know <laughs> make it to the final it's just getting that far is so hard getting to the western conference finals last year is so hard and it sort of spoiled me and it spoiled everybody else to where it's like oh well we'll just go do it again and i i I think you'd be i just think the mavericks if they were to get to that point if they had traded him they'd probably be willing to pay whatever i mean Looking at the West right now, it's so open. You don't think with having Kyrie, we could get to the West? I do think we could. No, I mean, like, I think there's a fair argument to be made for anything when it comes to Luka Doncic playing basketball. Like, you you could pair him with a blind person and make a pretty good argument, let alone one of the, you know, more spectacular offensive players in the last 10 years. I, But I think if you have... Your, in a sense, your assets, including Dorian Finney-Smith and Josh Green and your picks, isn't that enticing enough to get Kyrie and use those picks and the remaining assets to get someone else to kind of build a big three? That would, that would be what the hope has to be, where if you were, if you traded for Kyrie and held on to Dorian – and not giving up any picks. I mean, and that just seems like such a, whew, it seems like such a series of logical leaps. But if we're, you know, we're talking at 12, 15 in the morning, like I'm a big fan of logical leaps. Like that would be what you would have to, to, to believe is possible. So then let me ask you this. If Nets called the Mavs and said, Dinwiddie and Dorian Finney-Smith, you keep your picks. Would you do it? I don't think I would because Dorian is the best higher val or I'm sorry, higher salary player left on the Mavericks that is a positive force. Like teams view him positively. Spencer is a wash at best. And people are gonna hate me for that, but I think it's true. Um Reggie's older and a mess. Also not that high a salary. Tim is a mess. Burton's salary is so long. Where it's just like, if you move on from Dorian right now, you actually don't have any other moves to make that are that interesting. You know, you could give your picks up, but you have to send salary away. But but then you'd have Josh Green probably starting, and then you can also use Maxi because Maxi, I think, is a better defender. I think so, too, but I'm also worried that he might be dead. Yeah, like he dead. tore his hamstring. Nobody tears their hamstring. <laughs> supposed to be back sometime which i'm just like how is that possible does he have a new leg i mean it could have been a part well they still did surgery only three players in the last 15 years have had have had surgery on their hamstrings yeah it's really low it's like the guy jeff stotts his name in streetclothes.com is the injury uh website he doesn't he has three players in his entire database of of that is it's wild so it's like if you're bullish on Reggie, or I'm sorry, on on Maxi, I get why. I just like I'm I'm freaked out. That's, yeah, that's pretty fascinating. Wow, I didn't know it was such a low. Well, I mean, I play like I play an ass ton of fantasy football because I'm a degenerate, and like any time a running back or wide receiver hurts their hamstring, it's just like okay, this guy he's not going to be the same this year. James Harden was never the same after his hamstring, so you know it's a lot of thought about. Kleba, but I like if you value Kleba highly, you have plenty of reason to do so. Okay, mind me asking. What's that? I don't. I have one more. Sure, sure. To ask. So, um, let's say the whole Kyrie thing doesn't happen. Do you see? Because I know you're plugged in with the Mavericks. Eh. Uh, <laughs> I mean, more so than myself, who's just a fan, and I'm not a credential or anything, but. Do you have any expectations or any inclination that they will make a trade before the deadline? I do think they'd do something just to, re- just to mix up the chemistry. 
I don't think you can afford to go into the second half of the year if you still want to make the playoffs. Now, the, there's so many complicating factors. Luca's heel. I know we're all uh, Luca's a tank, so I never know how to feel about leg injuries. So that that's where I go. I, I, I think if if he's out longer, then they really have to start. Then they meet. They may need to make some choices by Thursday to where they start shipping players out. Um, I feel like his ankles are going to be yeah. like dirt. Yeah. Uh, cool. Well, thanks for having. No, me. appreciate you waiting so long to talk. Great having you on. All right, guys. We did an hour after a, after a garbage can. I don't know. I guess it's a more fun game than it had any business being. Appreciate everybody being wonderful and civil. I appreciate the people that understand that when I say certain things. I don't have any influence. So it's like my favorite is like when folks get mad at me about takes and it's like, well, I'm really not any different than any of y'all. I mean, our man that was up here noted that I'm, I, I could get a credential, but I've never gotten one. because I don't really want one because I don't want to be a real analyst because it's much more fun to be a guy in the peanut gallery talking shit like Stadler and Waldorf. Everybody have a nice Sunday. We'll be back soon. Go Mavs.